Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 5, Lesson 13, Thomas Edison, The Wizard of Menlo Park. We're going to start by going over some of the key vocabulary words you'll be hearing in today's reading. Our first term is scarlet fever, a disease that causes a fever, sore throat, and a red rash. Our next word is patent, the rights to make and sell something. Our next word is phonograph, an instrument that reproduces sounds that have been recorded on a grooved disc. Our next word is incandescent, which means glowing. And our last word is kinetoscope, an early machine for showing movies. We are now going to move into today's reading. Chapter 12, Thomas Edison, The Wizard of Menlo Park. Haven't you figured out why inventors are so important? They have helped every person's life in one way or another. Shouldn't there be an inventor's hall of fame? If there were, then a man named Thomas Alva Edison would be quickly voted in. Thomas Alva Edison was born February 11, 1847, in a small northern Ohio town. He was the last of seven children born to Sam and Nancy Edison. Al, the nickname his friends gave him, was a sickly child. He didn't even attend school until he was eight years old. Because of scarlet fever as a child, Al was left more than partially deaf. His illnesses did not stop his interest in nature. He asked questions that teachers didn't know how to answer. Why is the sky blue? Or how does fire work? He was curious about everything and liked to figure out things on his own. This is a photograph of Thomas Edison. At the age of 12, he worked selling newspapers on the railroad near his home. On the train, he heard people talking about many new ideas and inventions. He learned by listening to their stories. At 15, Al landed a job working the telegraph machine. He became an expert telegraph operator over the next six years. Even though he was deaf, he could feel the vibration of the wire. Al liked to work with electric machines. He found a way to make the telegraph faster and sold the idea to Western Union Telegraph Company for $40,000. With the money he made from the sale, he set up his first lab to continue his experiments. When the work Al was doing outgrew this lab, he built a bigger lab in Menlo Park, New Jersey. He hired some of the smartest scientists and engineers from around the world to work with him. Much of his early work was on sound. They called him the Wizard of Menlo Park because some of the inventions seemed magical. This is Edison in his lab at Menlo Park. In this new lab, he discovered a way to make Alexander Graham Bell's new telephone louder. He sold the patent for his new invention for $100,000. This was a huge sum or money at the time. His next invention was the phonograph. He was able to record sound on a cylinder wrapped in tinfoil. He played a version of Mary Had a Little Lamb to his fellow scientists. This was the first time anyone was able to listen to recorded music. This is the first phonograph. The invention that Edison is best known for came next. In 1879, he invented the first incandescent glowing electric light bulb. Three years later, he lit up 85 homes at once in New York City, and the age of electric light began. By the time Edison retired, he had patents on over 1,000 inventions. They include the kinetoscope, which is a machine for showing movies, and the microphone. What people sometimes forget is that many of Edison's experiments failed at first. He caused explosions at his labs and was forced to start all over many times. However, he kept moving forward each time. He always had a positive attitude. He knew he was closer to his next success. This is Thomas Edison in 1928 and two, his, two of his inventions, the kinetoscope and the light bulb. You may now move on to Unit 5, Lesson 13, Google Form.